Hello and welcome to build video number 7, the extended material. Well, I use my Eagle lot the latest year and as a person I constantly think about new joints and tweaks and modifications and improvements to the jig. And what I will show here today are two of these tweaks. Both of these are meant to enable angle joinery in different directions. Tweak number one is a solution for being able to tilt the carriage flange like I show here. This is a very simple tweak and it's also very low risk that doesn't affect the overall angles of the jig. This tweak can also easily be retrofitted to an existing jig. Tweak number two is a solution for tilting the carriage of the jig. It's not as simple and low risk as tweak number one. This one is slightly more complex and I would say it put higher requirements on you as jig builders than the rest of the jig build. It also has the potential to mess up the overall angles of the jig, so it's slightly higher risk. For those of you who already built your jigs, this tiltable carriage solution will require you to build a new base for the carriage if you want to implement this. Both of these tweaks will be included in the plans as options from now on. And for those of you who already downloaded the plans, you can read in the video description how to download these updates. Tweak number one was done to be able to cut angled tenons with the same ease and accuracy as I cut the straight ones. Angled tenons you typically find in a chair build but also in other areas of woodworking. I will go through this more in detail in the advanced joinery videos but to give you some background to why I tweaked the jig. The quick and dirty solution to cutting an angled tenon on this jig is to make a wedge with a desired angle and this one you Tape onto the carriage flange using double side adhesive. Then you insert your workpiece outside this wedge. And then you place another wedge between the clamps and the workpiece, and that is to clamp at a straight angle and not destroy your routed clamping cracks. This angled wedge maybe worked okay for quite short tenon like this at a certain angle, but what if I want the flexibility to make tenons at different angles, so if I want to make wider tenons, those will require a wider wedge for support and a wide wedge like this is not that easy to make accurately. So instead of dealing with all these angle wedges, I found a better solution than tweak the jig. The solution looks like this. I started by routing these circular segments connecting these four holes that I previously had in the carriage flange and I used this center hole here as a rotation point for my circle jig. Then on the carriage base I insert this rod and that fits to the center hole of my carriage flange like this. So now the flange is free to rotate about this rod. And then I fasten the carriage flange to the base using these two screws here. You can always go back to using four screws when you are at the right angle and then running with two screws when you make angled tenons, but it seems plenty stable enough to only use two screws. The way I use this is to take my protractor with a desired angle on it, then I slide that up against the carriage flange, and then I lock the flange in this angle. And then I just use my square to return to the zero position when I finish cutting my angled tenons or whatever it is. I'm usually not a big fan of introducing too many bells and whistles and do it all features into my jigs because somewhere along the way you will lose the overall accuracy. But this is a slightly different story I think. It's only related to the flange itself. It doesn't affect the jigs overall accuracy and it's so easy to return to the zero position after you angle the flange. That's why I chose to introduce this concept and the latest plans are updated with this rotatable flash. So there you can either choose to have it rotatable or have the old concept with four screws. For those of you who already built your jigs, you start by connecting these four holes that you already have. Where these lines meet, you drill a hole that matches the rotation pin in your circle jig for the router. And then when you make the routing, you can clamp your entire flange to the front vise if you have one. And when you route these segments on an existing jig, you will end up quite close to two crossed out positions that you have here and here. Your jigs doesn't look exactly like mine, so I just sketched these positions. You will end up close, but I don't see that as a big problem. But in the latest plans, I moved these crossed outs slightly. 
if you build a flash from scratch it could be hard to hold this small flash base in a secure way when you use your circle jig to route these openings here so i recommend that you use these two screw holes to screw the flash base onto a bigger sheet of plywood or mdf and then you can clamp that bigger sheet to your workbench and then if you already built your jig you align the flange with these four holes that you have in the carriage base and in that position you mark through the center of this hole here that is to get the position for the rotation pin and for those of you who build this jig for the first time i recommend that you don't have these four holes at this stage instead you use the carriage flange here to lay out these holes and you make sure that the clamping cracks lines up in both the parts and in that position you mark the four screw hole positions as well as the center hole and then i drill this hole for the rotation pin in the carriage base and here i made sure to have a quite snug fit towards the base while i drill up the hole slightly in the flange itself so when the flange moves and rotate it's only the flange that moves while the pin is fixated in the base that finish up the section about this tiltable flange I will show it in use in the advanced joinery videos. As you saw here it's quite simple to implement and it opens up new possibilities when it comes to angle joinery and at the same time it doesn't affect the overall function or accuracy of the jig. So so far I only have good things to say about this solution. I have to start this with a small disclaimer though. You will be a bit more on your own on this solution than the rest of the jig build. I will show here today in quick steps how I built it and this will be included as an option in the plans but the overall plans are not optimized for this solution. So for instance the cut list will be optimized for the standard carriage and so on. And the reason to that is that I see this as a more complex and slightly higher risk solution and I'm not sure how many people will build this version. So I want to keep the plans as simple as possible for the majority. Just as for tweak number one, this tweak number two was done to enable angle joinery, but this time in the other direction. I have a sample here, it's like a pretended splayed table leg that's bridle jointed directly into the top surface of a small table, but also for other types of angle joinery in this direction. This left me in pretty much the same situation as when I wanted to cut these angled tenons. I could work with these wedges, but instead put them on the carriage base itself and then attach my workpiece and cut angle joinery in this direction. But just as for the tenons, the wedges is a slow and unflexible way to solve this. So this is the solution I came up with for making angle joinery in this direction. I made a split carriage, so now I have an inner portion and an outer portion of the carriage and those are hinged up here at two positions. And then I have these brackets on the sides, one on this side and one on this side over here and in those brackets I lock the outer portion in any desired angle and I use this pretty much the same way as I use the tilted flange I use my protractor at the given angle and then I rotate my outer carriage part until it touches the protractor and then I lock it in position once locked in an angle it is a quite stable solution and it doesn't wobble or flex anywhere and this is even more simple than the flash to return to the zero position. I have two set screws underneath here that handles that. So I just pushes the outer part of the carriage in the bottom. And then I lock these pump screws on the sides. So how much can I then angle the carriage before I start running into my front support? Well this piece is around 50 millimeter thick and the angle here is 15 degrees. And that's plenty enough for a splayed table leg application for instance. Uh, if I wanted to go higher on the angle, I will run into the front support. You need to take into account that I need a support piece behind as well. If you are cutting thinner materials like these ones here, of course you can tilt the carriage more before risking to collide with the front support. These ones were cut at the maximum angle setting of this jig and that is around 23 degrees. So it's just an example of an angle box joint. I have no special use for this, I just wanted to test the system. This jig is not meant for really high angles like 45 degrees. If I wanted to do that, I made another jig. As I said before, you are a bit on your own on this one and I don't want to change the entire jig to be able to run higher angles. But 
If you want to run thicker pieces of wood at a high angle, I have a few tips and tricks how to solve that. The quick and dirty solution is to remove the front support at those occasions. I've done it myself a few times and then put it back afterwards. The jig will survive that very well. A more permanent solution would be to extend the bottom plate in this area so you move the front support outwards. You don't have to extend the entire base plate, you only have to extend this portion here where you have the front support. The third solution would be to make an alternative front support that mounts from the front rather than from the top. Then you will gain about 25 millimeters. Uh, I just made this one here, so I routed this rabbit that you see here. And that is for the right and left side of the jig to land on, so these are aligned. In this front support I also made a bit much bigger cutout here. And that makes it easier to see your layout lines from the front. Mounted to the jig, this alternative front support looks like this. It's not as pretty as the ordinary one, but it fills a function. So it sits with four screws from the front. And then in the base of the jig I have four cross dowels. And if you look here from the side you can see this routed rabbit that I was mentioning before. This is where the front support lands on the jig's base and align the left and right side of the jig. And with the same angle, 15 degrees, and the same piece of wood, 50 millimeter, with this alternative front support, I now have plenty of margin until I hit it. This tiltable carriage requires some very small changes to be done in the jig itself. These changes are not included in the plans, I only show them here. The first change is a bit depending on if you make this new support I just showed that you mount from the front or if you run the jig with the old one. If you use the old one you would need to cut away a bit here on the carriage flange, otherwise that would collide with the front support when you tilt the carriage. The second change is that you have to make a small cutout here on this side and that is to make room for the angle bracket so you reach all the way to the zero position of the carriage without colliding with the side. Except from these two small changes I just showed, the jig itself is not affected at all by this tiltable carriage. I will now give you some more info how I built it. To start with I should maybe mention that I had four of these linear bearings lying around in the shop making no use. So I could afford to make a new carriage and try this concept. I still have my old carriage in one piece if I want to go back to that solution. If we start with the very basics of this tiltable carriage, the inner part is 15 millimeter, the outer part is 18 millimeter, and I use this dovetail clamp tracks because they occupy the least amount of height. I don't want to have the outer part too flexy and I don't want to make it too thick and add weight outwards. So this is the solution I came up with. The inner and outer part are connected through these hinges here. Those are zero free play hinges. They're made of plastic but they have absolutely no free play and that's really important because you don't want to have any flex in this open book here. These hinges were routed in using this routing template to make sure that they ended up exactly at the same place at the same distance in both the parts. Looking at the other side the hinges are recessed into the inner and the outer plate so that I have about one millimeter gap in between them in the closed state. And this is intentional, don't go for zero gap here because that could mean that you can't close this book fully at the other end. For these hinges you will need to source this yourself. I bought this in my local hardware store. Here you see the inner portion of the tiltable carriage and here the linear bearings are connected and here I connect the ball screw nut that's slightly off position compared to where you have it but that doesn't matter. All these hold positions are identical to the fixed carriage. To control the closed state of the carriage, I have these set screws, one on each side, one here and one on the other side, and these are slightly protruding above the inner plate. And these are, as said, used to control the closed state, and that's the same as the right angle state of the carriage. The set screws are locked in position using these nuts here down in the holes. So when I fully close the carriage to the zero position, I have about the same gap down here as I have on the hinge side. If we then take a closer look on these side brackets that are used for locking the carriage in position, mine are made out of 10 mm solid high pressure laminate. That's because I ended up with quite thin sections here and here and needed a really stiff material. But I will give you some more room in the plants and you should be able to use like normal plywood for these. 
This circular segment here, the opening, is routed using a center where the hinge center is. So I recommend that you route this from a bigger sheet of plywood and then you cut it to size after routing this opening. In the plans, this area won't look exactly like mine. Your tracks are further down than I have my tracks on my jig. So to not collide with a side bracket here, you need to open up this routed track here to drop in the clamp straight from the front and then this lower track handles width from here to about here and then you will get one extra dovetail track here between these tracks a shorter one and that you use for clamping really wide work pieces so what to think about and what can go wrong here well many things can go wrong but this book construction is the most critical part for this to work accurately it needs to open like a perfect book and you can't have any free play between the parts in the hinge mechanism and in the closed state you have to make sure that both sides are flush with each other otherwise you would introduce an angle error here and that would affect the accuracy of the jig uh, here i sanded the outside slightly of the tiltable part and that is so it shouldn't interfere with the inside of the side brackets you can still hear a very slight scraping sound when I, when I enter them but through the range where I have my angles it doesn't interfere at all installing this tiltable carriage on the rails puts some higher requirements on the parallelity than with a standard carriage so to solve this when I slide this onto the rails and had all these screws in a loose position I put one distance piece here and one on the other side of the same height and that is to make sure that the carriage doesn't tilt in this direction for the normal carriage that wouldn't matter but if we have a tilting carriage here that would introduce angle errors so use distance pieces on both sides and then you lock the linear rail bearing screws in that position with all the screws tightened it's time to do some angle checks the first check you do is that the base of the carriage is right angle to the base plate so you check this both left and right sides and if you're out of square here then you have to adjust the angle of the backbone wall so that's these outer screws that's exactly the same as for the normal carriage when that is square and nice you go ahead and check the outer plate of the carriage so that's at the right angle both left and right sides and if you're out of angle here then you adjust that using these set screws here we have reached the end of build video number seven. This could be the last one, but you never know. Uh, tweak number one I can really recommend. It's so easy to implement and it doesn't mess up anything in the jig. Tweak number two, put some higher requirements on you as a jig builder. Uh, if you already built a jig, you have to build a new carriage base for this solution. If you build from scratch, it would take slightly longer time than with a flat carriage that is not tiltable. I like this tiltable carriage a lot I would say, it opens up some new possibilities in terms of angle joinery, but it's your decision if you want to build it or not. Thanks for watching.